All right, welcome. Team over here at PPM Works wanted to make sure that you saw that you can now import an MPP file into Project for the Web. And we're going to explore this together and see actually what it brings over, and maybe what it doesn't bring over. So let's do this together. First of all, you're going to get that packed. Um, you want to unzip that project import. We'll get you a link here at the end. I've already grabbed that off the site. And then you're going to have some DLL files as well as um, a few other readmes. What you want to do is make sure that you go into each uh, DLL file and make sure it doesn't say blocked here. And if so, you want to check that unblocked area so you can unblock it. Uh, it may be already unblocked for you. You got to check. You got to check that. But you want to do that really for this first DLL. But you can do them for both. It doesn't hurt anything. Next thing you're going to want to do is again, this is more uh, for those that have admin rights on their machine, uh, but Again, you might want to talk to your IT folks if this is something that you want to do. So we're going to open up PowerShell. We're going to run this as an admin. And when we do that, you can go ahead and say yes to this, asking about if we want to go forward. And then we want to go ahead and change directory, which is CD for those folks that haven't used this. And then I'm going to go and grab that. So I'm just going to write, write and copy. And I'm going to go ahead and over here and just control V and paste. So now that we're over in our project import, we need to run a command. And the command uh, is actually going to invoke and start this process and in start, it's going to start the import. Um, so that's called import. And here, I'll put it in here for us, import dash module. And then you're going to actually run this file that's out there. So it's going to pull that little section of the import. Now, if you like some, it may cause it and shoot you an error. So there you can see it says the file right here, currently system is running. I think it says right here is not digitally signed okay so what we want to go ahead and do is again check with your it folks but if you're running this at home and your machine and you're the uh, the admin there then you're going to go ahead and you can actually set an execution policy uh, so we'll put that in here and you want to go ahead and set an execution policy and do unrestricted so what this is actually going to do is see anything that's not digitally signed which this one isn't it's going to go ahead and allow you to run these scripts. So you should know what that means before. And if you have any reservations, uh, this probably isn't something that you're going to want to do. All right. So we go here and run this. Now you can always hit uh, help or you can go through here and just say, yes, I want to can do this or yes to all in this case. And we're just going to step through this. So we'll just do yes. So now we're back to that import and we're going to try to run that import module command again. So I'm just going to put the up arrow, go back to the import module, and we're going to see if we can get through this error together. All right. So it says, yep, here's the security. You run only scripts that you trust while on the, from the internet, useful, blah, 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 blah. You know, do you want to run this script? Do not run, run once, suspend, etc. And I'm going to go ahead and hit R to run this. Now you could have said yes to all up here. And that means every time you run this script, you're not going to see this warning message really up to you. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to us. We'll be sure to help you. So I'm going to hit R, run. So now we're down here to this import. If you didn't have any of these errors, you would have gone from the, you know, the download area to the import and you would have gone just back to a blank. It would have run successfully. But I want to make sure that you see all the different styles of errors they could potentially have if you're new to this PowerShell area. All right, so now we, we need to go ahead and find, um, we have to go out and find an actual project. So we're going to import, and you got to go find your instance ID. Now that, um, I'll walk you through and how you, you actually go and find that instance ID, but you, you're you going to do a command. Um, the command's going to start, and it's going to say import project in the instance. And now we're going to go over to our environment, and I'll show you how to get that. So let me pull up our, our environment right here and bring that down. Here we are. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab that instant, that, that path, okay? And that URL path that you can have um, is really where you're gonna be pulling that in. So this is, you're looking for the organizational in uh, CRM, which is actually if you go into project for the web, let me just show you where we're going to end up this uh, project for the web. That's sort of where we want to pull this into. And to grab that, 
we can go in a couple different areas. But let me just go to, oops, that didn't come up. Our path here, which happens to be org. So if you just start, this is the CRM. So that's really where I'm, I'm going off to, is trying to find, oops, this one. So if you go up to Power Apps, you can also do it just by going into make.powerapps.com. There it is. And when you jump into here, you can then jump into your apps. And here's project. Okay. And we can go ahead and grab uh, the same organizational policy there. Um, there we go. So I'm going to go jump in here. We have org. See all this gibberish? That's what we're going to be taking. So we're going to take all this out to dynamics.com. I'm going to copy that. And we're going to go back to our script. Put in our instance ID right there. And then we need to put the file name. I'm going to do a backslash, or sorry, a minus sign, file path. Let me expand this a little bit. There's file path. And then we got to go grab a file. Well, you'll notice that over in the import, we did have a sample project that's out here. Um, we can provide you one too if you really want to, or you can you know, just simply uh, create your own. So this is just a, an MPP file, but you're going to need to take um, the path. So you're going to want the full path. So I'm going to go grab the full path first, go out here, put in my quotes my full path, and then you need the name of the project. So in this case, a little bit long, but PPM works app dev project sample dot MPP file, right folks, We're bringing in that MPP file. And I'm just gonna double check this. So we have um, the instance ID, then we have the file path, we have the whole file, and now we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. Now this is gonna, crank for a bit. It might have you log in. Um, so on my other screen, it looks like I do need to just log back in. So, all right, so this was over on the other area. I have to actually log in. So now that I do that, let's go back over to this area. And wait for this to run. So well, that's running. I'm also going to go back over to our home page. So we're going back to our recent and I'm going to go into created by me. And this is where our project came in. So PPM works app dev sample. So let's go ahead and pull this up in project for the web. Now project for the web, for those that know, um, you got some columns here that you're going to want to expose. Well, let's go see what it actually brought in. So I'm going to hit percent complete. I'm going to go ahead and hit my effort. We're going to do my finish, my start. You guys get the point where we're going. Just want to expose all the columns that we have. So there's actual effort. There's remaining. Outline number is going to be there. And what about those successors and predecessors? So let's add those. Now, let's just recap what we did. We opened up we opened up our, our file. We unpacked this file. Then we went into the PowerShell and we ran some commands. Now, if I scroll up here, the commands that we actually ran were import module right here. Okay, we had it. We had some security that we need to get through with unrestricted. If you didn't have that, you'd keep going. Skip all this stuff. And then right here, you do your import with your instance ID. Make sure you find, know where that is. And then all the way out to that sample MPP. And then you get your imported. You see all the good stuff and it's done and you're ready to import something else at this point. At this time, almost the end of April 2021, this is how you need to pull in an MPP file uh, into Project for the Web. So folks, I hope that helped. You can find this and all of our recordings out in our site. You can go into Home or Heather's done a great job in putting all these playlists up here so you can go out here and search for this. I would, if you found this helpful at all, go ahead and subscribe and we'll be getting some more videos to, to you soon. Have yourself a great day.